good afternoon or morning or evening wherever you are in the world um, welcome to ambitious business owners become known become famous um, I'm Susie hopefully if you've been a member of this group um, for a while you know who I am uh, welcome to those who are new so um, I get asked an awful lot about influencers I also hear a lot of horror stories about influencers and businesses that have been um, stung by um, using an influencer and either the influencer didn't carry out what they expected um, them to do or they did it and it was unsuccessful or they didn't have product returned. Um, hi Linda, welcome. Um, or maybe what was actually done wasn't to their standard um, or liking. Um, lots of uh, lots of issues with influencers, and it really bothers me um, because there are a few things that you can do to um, to protect yourself um, and to make the best of using an influencer. But before we talk about that and the and what to uh, avoid. Um, oh, oh, let me just, <laughs> sorry, that's turned off, but it's ringing through my phone. Um, but what I want to talk about is um, why you want to use an influencer. Um, a lot of people um, see influencers being used or they hear of other businesses using it and it's, it seems to be the latest trend and it's fashionable and they think it's going to propel their business into fame and fortune without actually considering, well, um, is an influencer right? Um, am I just doing it because I've seen someone else get success and therefore they assume that they're going to be successful too? So be clear on why you want to use the influencer and whether it's going to be right for your business, whether it's the right time for your business. Um, and there's lots of considerations um, to it. Now, um, obviously those watching live, feel free to ask questions or make comments. Um, if you're listening to the replay, um, you're most welcome to post comments afterwards and I'll jump in and answer them. Um, so you need to be clear on what your aim is with the influencer, because ultimately when you start researching um, and approaching them, then you need to have that very clear which brings me on to researching. One of the big mistakes I see people make when they um, reach out to an influencer is they see the influencer's Instagram following, they see their numbers, they see how famous they are, um, maybe they see the brands that they're working with and they want a part of it. But they do no homework on that influencer. They perhaps maybe have been following them, some don't even follow them, they just come across them suddenly and feel that they're the right fit and, and approach them straight away. Do your research first. That means um, interacting on their page, seeing what goes on um, on their page, getting to know what they're about, their tone, their style, the sorts of products that they're um, promoting or services or whatever their uh, industry they're influencing in. Um, you've got to get to know them. Um, you've got to um, ask for case studies, you know, there are examples of other people that they've um, worked with. Um, speak, um, speak to those people that have used that influencer. There's nothing like finding out, you know, it's like a, a testimonial or, um, you know, do, do that homework, ask them, how did it work? What was, what was the best things? You know, did you come across any problems? There's no harm in approaching other people um, that, that have used them at all. Um, you wouldn't, um, you know, you wouldn't pick a web developer perhaps unless you've got maybe a recommendation or you saw examples of the work. Same with an influencer. Don't assume that what they're doing is successful for those brands. I uh, did some research on behalf of a client who was approached by an influencer. Um, and after a little bit of probing and scratching below the surface, I realized that this influencer really had no runs on the board. Yes, they got a fairly sizable following, um, but she couldn't give me any real examples of what she'd done, what the results were, um, and she couldn't give me the contact of the people she'd worked with. And I had this very bland, wishy-washy testimonial, um, and it's brand building. 
but a lot of small businesses don't go you don't use an influencer just to build a brand or to become known they want to sell product that's ultimately what they need and if they're paying for that influencer even more so because they need a return on that investment so if you're expecting to make money by paying for an influencer please 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 do your homework because otherwise it becomes it becomes just paid advertising um, and this is what um, worries me a lot of the time. People would do their homework on a, to advertise in a magazine or a paper and they'd find out, you know, the readership and um, they'd find out, you know, how big would my article be? Yet they're happy to pay money or send free product to an influencer without really knowing um, what the return could be or how it's going to be used. Um, so, yeah, just, just, just think about it in that way. Because ultimately, I want all of you guys to be your own influencer. You should be working towards becoming an influencer yourself, not trying to use others. Um, because as soon as you fall into that trap, um, you, you lose your identity and you're relying on other people to love your product or service as much as you do. And they never will do. Um, Using an influencer should be a partnership. It's a relationship. It's a collaboration. Um, it shouldn't just be about paid advertising. So when you're, when you're um, at the stage where you've done your homework and you've researched some influencer options, you may want to connect with them and have a chat to them um, and, and get some more information. And then it's about um, putting an agreement in place. Again, I hear so many people who have no documented agreement about what's going to happen. And then they cry about the fact that, well, they didn't post or they, they're not replying to, to my emails or I sent them product and they still haven't posted. OK, so what was the agreement? What was what was laid down? Did you say I will send you product? You will post on this day or this time. These are the sorts of posts you will do. This is the style. I'll provide you with images. You know, where is the agreement? You've got to document everything. Um, and if an influencer doesn't sign up to that or isn't working with that, then I suggest they're not really the sort of influence you want to work with. They're just about getting free product um, or being paid to advertise for you. Uh, and if they're in that position, then they're not going to promote your brand in the way you want because there's no buy-in for them. There's no um, there's no incentive for them to do it. It's just, oh, you give me $200 and I'll, I'll post. But you get a formal agreement and show that you know, this is a business arrangement, this is professional, um, and, uh, and discuss your brand, and you've done your research on them, and you know that your brand is aligned with them, and they love it, and you've built a relationship with them, you're going to get a far better response from them. And as I say, if they're not in that, and they're not interested in, in discussing, then they're probably not the best influencer for you. Um, so, um, so it's all about being clear on why you want to use an influencer, and why you think you need one. Doing your homework, can't emphasize that enough. You wouldn't, um, as I say, you wouldn't just partner with anybody and not know who they were and what they're about and whether they were going to reflect your business accurately. Have an agreement in place. Now, you don't have to go to a lawyer to get one written up, um, but you do need it put in writing and get their agreement to it so that both parties know exactly what's expected of them um, and that every eventuality um, is, is, um, is covered. Hi Melanie, nice to, nice to um, have you join us. Um, and, uh, and as I say, and part of your homework is getting examples, getting um, case studies, seeing what they've been doing, following them, researching them, can't emphasize it enough. Um, if you're sending product, again, in the agreement, you've got to have rules around what happens to that product. Is it for them to keep? Um, is, it, uh, is it to be returned? And if so, when? Uh, what happens if it's returned and it's damaged? What happens if they don't return it? Um, how many posts are they expecting to do? Um, is there a particular language that you don't use? Um, you know, how much are you going to trust that person to reflect your brand accurately? And that comes back to doing your research and seeing how they reflect other brands in their um, promotions. So 
you know, if they've got a very um, uh, chatty or, <laughs> hi Melanie, um, a very chatty or light-hearted style and that doesn't fit what you want, then, then they're probably not right for you. Um, don't just jump at the first influencer that you come across, or as I say, don't jump at an influencer just because it's worked for somebody else. You don't know it's worked for them unless you have that conversation. And every business is different um, and it may work for a different reason. So unless there's any questions from you guys watching, um, hopefully that's covered off a few of the key things that you need to consider um, when you're using influencers. As I say, post um, below um, if you're watching this um, replay, if you've got any questions about influencers. But, you know, I'm here to help. Um, I hate hearing the stories of people falling into the trap of, of using influencers and getting stung. Um, so please um, use me, ask questions, and I'm always, always here. So thank you ever so much for those that listened live. And for the rest of you, hope to see you around in the group. Thanks, guys.